Welcome to playing with junk. Today I'm playing with this old LCD screen and I'm explaining uh, the difference between an LCD and an LED screen. Now, as we can see on at the cables on the side, the blue and the pink cables, uh, we can clearly see that this is not an LED screen and I will explain why. You can see these uh, silicon high voltage cables and high voltage is something that doesn't fit with LED so we must have something else inside. Let's see. And as you can see on this power supply board, which is also the power supply for the backlight, we have this uh, relatively big uh, transformer that supplies the voltage to the four connectors. And there is a lot of uh, routed uh, insulation gap between that tells us we are dealing with a relatively high voltage and uh, the manufacturer wanted to make sure that there is no arcing between the the traces and so well high voltage now let's see where these cables are going And as you can see, the display panel is manufactured by, well, where is it? Oh yes, Samsung. Samsung, one of the biggest manufacturer of LCD displays. Uh, of course, uh, manufacturers like IBM or HP, they don't manufacture their own displays. They take something that's existing Now I have separated the LCD module from the backlight system The LCD is of course completely black because uh, there is nothing that drives the pixels right now The LCD is just like some sort of filter it lets light pass through or not so all the light from your screen is uh, generated behind the LCD panel and the LCD is like a, a photographic slide uh, it needs some uh, some light to, to work Nice pixel effects here from the from the roster uh, in the LCD panel. The driving circuitry is on the on the flexible print underneath. Now and the rest here is uh, all the backlight, which I will take apart now. So as I said before, uh, I don't have to reassemble this screen because uh, after this video it goes definitively to scrap. So I'm not very careful with this uh, disassembling. Normally if 
if this uh, is a repair I will be a little bit more careful not to break any tabs or bend uh, the sheet metal. Now we have a lot of different foils here. The first one is a, a matte foil. It's just a, well, a sheet of plastic to uh, distribute the light a little bit more uh, evenly. Now you can see on the second foil there on the table there is an interesting uh, effect with my LED lighting that comes from above. Normally this is a, a strip of LEDs but on this uh, on this lens it is in fact a, a lens, a Fresnel lens which does very weird optical effects here. Wow. Uh, maybe I can use it to play with it a little bit later. Then we have another foil, also a matte one. It's a little bit thinner than the, the first matte foil and it's glossy on the other side. Then we have a piece of acrylic glass, plexiglass, which is here a, a relatively thick sheet. It's uh, about six millimeters thick. And on the sides of this are these tubes, uh, these fluorescent tubes. They are like flu fluorescent tubes, you know, from a uh, from uh, offices or maybe you have one in your garage or in your workshop. Um, that one is already broken so we can see inside it's just a, a tube of glass with uh, some phosphorus materials inside that make the light. In the tube in, uh, itself there is a, a little bit of mercury making some mercury vapor. So this is in fact a mercury vapor lamp with a fluorescent coating. The mercury vapor itself creates uh, ultraviolet light and uh, the fluorescent coating uh, converts that ultraviolet light into visible white light or maybe yellow light or red light. Uh, you can have it in all the colors you want. Now the mercury is in fact the problem why these uh, fluorescent tubes are no longer used because of the ROHS uh, rules. Uh, they try to reduce all these toxic materials and that's the reason or why they switched over to LED backlights. So now that's the entire setup. We have the LCD on the top, we have the backlight assembly below and we have the fluorescent tubes above. And that's exactly the same arrangement for LED TVs. The only difference is we replace this one, the fluorescent tubes that are on each side of the screen. We replace this one with an LED strip. That looks like this. So that's the entire difference between an LED screen and an LCD screen. Of course this LED screen must not be confused with an OLED screen, an OLED, an organic LED screen which works completely different. 
but the difference between the LCD and the LED screen is only the backlight uh, which is made with, on the LCD which is made uh, with the fluorescent tubes and on the LED with of course LEDs but the display itself is a LCD panel no matter what kind of background illumination you have. Now I want to uh, power up this LED strip. We have 38 LEDs all connected in a series with a voltage of about 2, maybe 2.5 volt per LED. We get a voltage of about 60 something volt for uh, the entire strip. So I have to uh, set my power supply or my both outputs of the power supply in series. That's what I'm doing right now. channel 1 and channel 2 in series. I can this Rigol power supply has a capability of 32 volts per channel for the first two channels. So I get the maximum uh, voltage of 64 volts. Uh, I also activate the tracking of channel 1 and channel 2, so both channels are uh, do exactly the same, the same voltage, the same uh, current limiting. From the data sheets I found uh, these LEDs can be powered with up to 150 milliamps, that's the absolute maximum. So I will set my power supply to 50 milliamps, which keeps me on the safe side. We can go higher uh, after the first test. Uh, let's type it 50 milliamps, okay. Uh, blue is positive, black wire is negative. And then let's power it up and see what it does. Wow! Well, these uh, backlight LEDs are extremely bright. I mean, they are working now at uh, 50 milliamps. They can go practically up to 100. So I'm at half the current and uh, they're they have a decent brightness. So we can see now the LCD panel is black because uh, there is no pixels, no pixel active on it. The background is completely white. Of course now it's uh, a little bit brighter on the on the upper side because I only have one strip uh, attached. Normally there is another strip on the on the lower side. So let's see what these uh, different foils do. So as I said the first foil here is a, a matte foil. It's just a matte piece of uh, plastic. It just distributes the light a little bit evener, evenly. Uh, the Fresnel lens is interesting as it makes the light in fact a little bit brighter. You can see it on camera right now because from that angle it uh, looks like uh, the Fresnel lens makes the picture, makes the background darker, but that's not true. Then the other matte foil is also improving the, the light intensity from this uh, 
background illumination. I will show you that in a moment. Here you can see it when I put the foil on the screen it gets brighter. So the bright uh, part here is where the foil is and the darker part is well, where it's missing. From the side it looks a little bit different. Okay, and then there is the acrylic glass. This, uh, uh, this acrylic glass has some tiny dots. They are not painted, they are like etched into the surface, into one surface, the upper surface here. And as you can see, in the center the dots are bigger and at the corners, at the sides, the dots are smaller. This is because the light comes from the side. So at the, at the edge you have more light, so you need less dots to uh, uh, to uh, let the light pass out of this surface. So the light inside the panel it bounces up and down, it is re reflected by the, the surfaces and when it hits one of these dots it is uh, released from this panel and it uh, can spread out in the free atmosphere. So in the center there is less light because it's uh, farther away from the, from the lightning source. So we need more of these white pixels to uh, uh, get more light out of, of the panel. So this uh, LED strips here I salvaged from an old scrap, well it was not that old, uh, from a scrap TV. It was a 40 inch TV. It had four of these strips, two uh, on the upper side, upper side, two on the lower side. And uh, they are very nice to play with because uh, they are extremely bright. They have a nice white light and you can easily illuminate a room or maybe your workbench with them. So they are now at 50 milliamps and uh, in fact because we have two of them it's only 25 milliamps per strip. Now uh, 100 milliamps per strip is possible so I will adjust my power supply to 200 milliamps. Of course I have to do this on both channels. Yes, and that's full brightness of two of these strips. It's a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but uh, I think you get an idea how bright these really are. So, uh, well, it's uh, quite a nice toy to play with.